Hi guys, welcome to W3 Grads. In the previous video of this series, I showed you how you can get private GPT installed on your systems. In this video, we'll figure out how this code inside the private GPT repository creates this magic, how it can let you interact with your documents. I'll walk you through the complete code, how this all process is being done through this magical repository. But before diving deeper into the code, let us try to understand the whole process with the help of this diagram. So as you can see from the diagram, it is a six step process from data loading to answering your queries. Let us try to understand this one by one. So the first step in this process is document loading. So whatever data you have, whether in the form of URLs, you have PDF, PPD format data, or you have databases. The data from these data sources are first loaded into documents. Now the document sizes could be very large to process. So these documents are further split into smaller chunks. Then these chunks of data are stored in a vector store. What is vector store? I'll definitely create a video on it why we specifically select vector store for storing these chunks of data. But for now, let me tell you that in vector store, the data is stored in context to similarity. That means similar type of data will be stored together. And this plays a crucial role for fetching out relevant information uh, for your queries. Now let's come to the retrieval part. Here, when you ask a query, first of all, it performs the similarity search on the vector store. So it fetches out the relevant information and those relevant information are then converted into a prompt, which is actually put into the LLM, which is large language model. And hence you get the contextual answer to your queries. So I hope the idea is clear to you. Uh, let me summarize. First, we load the documents, we divided them into chunks, and then we add them to the vector store. And whenever you are requesting some query, it is looked for a similarity search in a vector store first. And then with the help of relevant information, a prompt is generated, which is, which is passed to the LLM on your machine. And hence the LLM responds to the query in context to the information present in the documents. Now, let me take you to the directory structure of private GPT, which is installed on our system. So when we installed private GPT, we have these files and folders on our system. And this is source document folder where I upload the documents with which I want to interact to. And this is models folder as we created, we downloaded the model and stored it in uh, this models folder. And we have these two files, which are actually creating the magic in just.py and private gpt.py. Now let me open this project into the visual studio. So here it is. Now, as we saw, the first step was document loading. So here, if I'll see, I'll go to this file in just.py. This in just.py file contains the code where this document is being loaded. So what all things you require for loading your documents, uh, let's see. So when you want to load these data sources into documents, you need certain document loaders. So here you see Langchain provides you different document loaders. Langchain.document loaders, you import different types of loaders. You have CSV loaders, Evernote loader, PDF loaders, text loaders, then unstructured email loaders, EPUB loaders. So these are different file formats as we have seen that uh, private GPD supports different type of file formats, right? And uh, here I have these mappings. If you will see loader mapping, we have this dictionary where it tells what type of loader is required for what type of files, right? So if we have .csv file, we have a CSV loader. If we have doc files, we have unstructured word document loader. If we have PDF file, we have PyMU PDF loader, right? For PPT, we have unstructured PowerPoint loader. So Langchain provides you different types of loaders for different types of files. So we can see all these formats are supported by private GPT and we have a dedicated loader for all different formats. 
Now let me run this ingest.py file first and let's see what does it do for me. I'll run python3 ingest.py. So when I run this file, first thing that it do is it is creating a new vector store for me. Now you'll see this db folder has been created on my system. So this db folder is the one which contains the vector store. We are using chroma vector store over here. So it has created this vector store. Then it says, see it created the vector store. Then it loaded the documents from the source documents. So whatever documents we have provided in this, it is lo it has loaded those documents. And how it is loaded? Through these loaders. So we have PDF file. It might have used the PDF loader to load these files into the document, the first step, right? Then see, it splitted the it into five chunks of maximum 500 tokens of each. So from where it gets this 500 tokens, so it divided the document into 500 tokens and from where it get this value. So here if you'll see, we have given this model n CTX context size. This is actually token size. So token size is 500. So it, it divided into five chunks of 500 tokens. Then it created embeddings. Embeddings are created to store these documents into the vector storage. Then it stored the data in the DB and finally it says ingestion complete. You can now run private gpt.py to query your document. So the first step as you'll see from loading to splitting to storing into vector store is being done by this ingest.py. Now let us go through this ingest.py file how all these process is being done. So first we'll go to this main function. In main, it is initialize some embeddings. What embeddings it is going to use? It is initialized over here. And see first it checks whether the vector store exists or not. So in our case, when we don't have vector store, it will execute inside this else part. Now, it will first process the documents, if you'll see. Now let's see what this process document is doing. So if I'll go to this process documents, right, uh, it will load the documents first. So when you'll go to this load document functions, it takes two arguments. Uh, the first one is the source directory and second one is the list of ignored files. So with the help of this list of ignored files, it will figure out all the filtered files in the directory. So it will filter out all the files from the source directory which are not ignored and create a list of filtered files. Now this function calls this load single document function with filtered files as you can see. Now I'll go to this load single documents. This load single document what does it do? It checks for the extension whether this extension is valid or not. So here if you can see it is extracting out the extension from the file name then it checks if the extension is the present in the mapping, loader mapping. So we have this dictionary where it contains all the supported extensions, file formats, and it also stores the corresponding loader for it. So first it checks whether the extension of the file exists in this dictionary or not. If it exists, then it loads the corresponding loader. And with the help of this loader, it loads the document. Here, as you can see, the documents are loaded. But when I run this file, it, it simply gave me the status loading documents from the source documents and it gave me loaded one new documents from the source documents. I need to figure out how this document actually looks like when it's loaded. So let me uncomment this print statement. Let's try to see what this document exactly is and how, the, how does it looks like. Let's see. See, it is loading documents and this is the document which is loaded. So it is a document which gives me this page content, right? This all is the page content. And then it has also stored some metadata with it. If you'll see, it has stored the metadata, which says source, what is the source of it? What is the file path? and which page it is, total number of pages. Let's try to print the, because it is 
zero document let's try to print the metadata of it now i'm printing only metadata of the source document see it has loaded the document and this is the metadata where it says source equals to this file path is this it is pages 0 total pages is this format is pdf 1.4 title and it contains all the information the meta information out of it so whenever we are loading the documents we can check out for their uh, metadata now when the document is loaded as you can see loaded one new documents from the source document second thing it has done is it has split it into chunks i showed you how, from where it is getting this value 500 right we have defined the chunk size now in this code if you'll see in this process document function if you'll see we are splitting first we are creating an instance of recursive character text splitter so we have different types of splitter so i will be sharing with you what all types of splitters do we have in the later videos and why we are specifically selecting recursive character text splitter over here then we are creating the instance where we are passing the chunk size and we are passing the chunk overlap size. We will be figuring out what is the importance of this chunk overlap also. But here uh, we will we have created the instance of this splitter and with the help of this uh, text splitter now we have split the document in chunks. Now when the document is split it, the all processing is done let me go to main function then it creates the db for me so it provides the text what the alt text to be stored what embeddings to be used while storing and then it gives path to the directory then it gives the settings right we are using chroma vector store so it has chroma settings now when we'll run this ingest.py once again when the vector store already exists and this if part is executed let's see what happens now when i'm calling the process documents i'm passing the information of all the files which are already stored in my database to this process documents file and why we are doing so so that we may not process the already stored files once again let's see how we are doing this so when we try to call this process documents it actually fetched out all the collection from the database first and then passed it to this process document files so that these files which are already stored should not be processed once again they become the ignored files and will not be processed again so only the new files added to the source document will be processed so this is how the first phase is being established. Loading of documents, dividing them into chunks, and then storing them into DB. So this is how the first phase is being processed in private GP. This all is done inside this ingest.py file where we are loading the documents, we are dividing them into chunks, and we are storing them into DB. Now the retrieval part is being done in private gpt.py file. I will be explaining the complete working of this private gpt.py file in the next video. I hope you understood how this ingestion process is being done and why it is important. If you have any queries, do let us know in the comments. I'll try to resolve them then and there. Thank you. Thank you very much.